Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to model how to convert circular equations from general form to standard form. Standard form is the common form we use circular, C for circular equations because that gives us a center and the radius. General form has its purposes, but overall we like standard form. So just kind of going back to what you've seen before, standard form x minus h squared quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. And remembering that h and k tell you the center and r gives you the radius of the circle. This is the center and r tells you the radius, right? Then we also have the general form. General form, we typically don't use it a whole lot, but it does pop up most times as far as converting. So today, or in this video, we're going to look at converting from this general form to standard form. So in order to do that, we're going to do completing the square, kind of a modified version. We're going to complete the square in order to do it. You may have seen completing the square back when you did quadratics and other equations. Maybe in geometry, you did some with circle equations, pre-cal, conic, song. All right, let's see if we go. This is our first one. We have x squared plus y squared plus 8x minus 2y minus 64 equals 0. So this is in general form. The first thing I always suggest you do when you're doing these is to get all the like variables together. And what I mean is all the x type terms and all the y type terms together. So we're going to have x squared. And I'm just going to move the 8x beside the x squared. And then plus the y squared minus 2y minus 64. And that's what I mean, like getting those all together. All right. So once you do that, that's always step one. Step two, now we're going to start converting. After I get all the variables together, I'm going to move the co constant. So I'm going to move the constant to the other side of the equation by adding it because it's subtraction. Remember, inverse operations still apply. So I'm going to have x squared plus 8x. I'm going to leave a space plus y squared minus 2y. I'm going to leave a space equals 64. All right, so now the thing is, why did I leave that space? So we're completing the square. So basically, we need to find the value of c. And this is going back to things from, we had to do this with parabolas. We need to find the value of the new C to complete the square. So how do you find it? Very simple. You take half the middle term, and you take that number and square it and add it into the problem. So I take half a positive 8, square it, so that's going to be 16. I do the same thing with this negative 2 half a negative 2 and square it and I'm going to add it in so that's positive 1 now half the middle term square half the middle term square that's why I wanted the x's and y's beside each other second thing is this an equation has to stay balanced so you see how we added in that 16 and we added in the 1 on that left side of the equation we have to also do that on the right side of the equation for the equation to be balanced so I have to add in 16, and I have to add in 1. All right? So this is going to end up being x squared plus 8x plus 16 plus y squared minus 2y plus 1 equal... Eighty-one. Okay. So y'all, we are almost done getting this into the to the standard form. You're like, how's that? What's going on? Very simple. So now we're going to factor this, and this is where I said I'm going to do a modified version. I'm not going to go through the factoring you did, like in algebra one, maybe algebra two, where you had to do the two sets of parentheses and figure out what multiplies to sixteen and add eight. We've already done that work. This is a perfect square trinomial. So back in this step, when we have the middle number and squared it, we just take half the middle number. 
So, what's half of 8? 4. And it's a positive 8, so I have x plus 4 squared. I do the same thing. This We did the half the middle number, which was negative 2. Half of negative 2 is negative 1, so that's y minus 1 squared. We got 81 from earlier. Equals 81. So we have the circle written in standard form, the equation written in standard form. So just recap, put the letters variables together like variables. Move the constant term to the other side of the equal sign. Then we did half the middle term and squared it. Added that in on both sides. Didn't go through the whole step of factoring. We just like took a little shortcut right then and added it in. All right, here's another one. Same deal. First step is to always get the like variables together. So I'm going to have x squared plus 14x plus y squared minus 12y plus 4 equals 0. After we do that, get the like variables together. Subtract 4, subtract 4. So we end up with x squared plus 14x, leave a space, plus y squared minus 12y, leave a space equals negative 4. From here, we need to complete the square, find a new c. So remember, you take half the middle number and square it. So 14 divided by 2 squared. 14 divided by 2 is 7, squared is 49, and I'm adding that in. All right, then I take negative 12, same thing, negative 12 divided by 2 which is negative 6, squared is positive 36. Okay. And remember, we have to keep our equation balanced. So if I add it in 49 and 36, I have to add it in on both sides to keep the equation balanced. Okay. So this ends up giving me x squared plus 14x plus 49 plus y squared minus 12y plus 36 equals 81. And it just so happened this was 81 again. There can be different answers. It just so happened to be 81. <laughs> so now, like I said, I'm not going to go through the whole step of factoring. I'm going to go basically to the end of the problem. Write my parentheses with the square. I'm going to have an x. Remember, here you just take half the middle number and take the sign. So half of 14 is 7. So it's positive because of 14 is 7. So 14 is positive. On this one, we're going to take the y's. Half of negative 12 is negative 6. Equals 81. So if you were to multiply this back out, 7 times 7 is 49, 7 plus 7 is 14. Negative 6 times negative 6 is, ne is 36, negative 6 plus negative 6 is negative 12. This is written in standard form. The center would be negative 7, positive 6, and the radius of that circle would be equal to 9. All right, last one. We have 4x squared plus 4y squared plus 32y minus 36 equals 0. So if you look at this one, we're missing just a regular x variable. It's okay, though. We can just make it a 0 if you need that placeholder. So we can just say this is 4x squared plus 0x plus 4y squared plus 32y minus 36 equals 0, All right? And if you notice, this time we have leading coefficient 4, but just like we can always do with any equation, 
all these numbers are divisible by 4. So I can go through and divide both sides of the equation by 4, and it's perfectly fine. So 4 divided by 4 is just going to give me x squared. 0 divided by anything is still 0. 4 divided by 4 is just y squared. 32 divided by 4 is 8y, and then minus 9. And once again, 0 divided by anything is 0. Now we do what we normally do. Move the 9 by addition. So that's x squared plus 0x, leave a space, plus y squared plus 8y, leave a space, equals 9. Now we do what we've been doing. Half the middle number squared, so 0 divided by 2 squared is 0. So we're adding in a 0. 8 divided by 2 squared, 8 divided by 2 is 4, 4 squared is 16. We're adding in a 16. So this is just x squared plus 0x plus 0 plus y squared plus 8y plus 16 equals 25. Last step, write your parentheses with the squares. We have x. And you can put half the middle number so we know half of 0 is 0. So you can do plus 0, minus 0. That doesn't matter because the signs there, 0 is neutral. And you don't have to write a 0 in at all if you want to. So I'm just going to say minus 0. And then half of 8 is 4. So half of 8 is 4. Positive 8 because remember you take the sign of the number. And then 25. So this will have a center at 0, negative 4, and a radius of 5. Okay, thanks for watching, everyone. And let me know if you have any questions or suggestions for additional videos. And I'll see you later.